Hi everyone, thanks very much for joining us today. Um, quite recently, I thought I would interview a few uh, specialist experts in their field to help us families that have got children with additional needs and um, see if we can provide some tips and tricks uh, that we can use in lockdown, but also going forward. So today we've got the amazing Karen Massey with us and Karen has been a speech and language therapist. So with this croaky voice, Karen, I'm gonna throw it over to you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, morning, Sharon. Um, great to be here with you this morning. Thank you. Um, so I am Karen Massey. I am a speech and language therapist um, for children. I'm also a mum and um, sister, daughter, and all through my um, life growing up, I um, was used to meeting and knowing and being friends with um, people from lots of different backgrounds, um, including many, many people with um, disabilities. Um, and complex needs. Um, it was just normal for me, it was part of my life. Um, and so when it came to the point of looking at what I wanted to do, um, you know, career-wise, um, all I really knew was that I was interested in working with children and that I was really keen to help them. Um, I stumbled across speech and language therapy and I've been really fortunate in my career to work um, in the area of my passion, which is children with complex needs. Um, one of my big specialist areas is uh, Down syndrome. Um, it seems to have it all. Um, amazing children to work with. Um, and also I'm really interested in children with complex speech needs. Um, and many of our young children with um, Downs do have that because of their low muscle tone um, and their difficulties coordinating their mouth muscles often. So um, yeah, and it's, um, it's just fun. I love my job. Um, so, um, through attending lots of training myself and working with lots of um, brilliant young children and families, I have um, come to the point where I, I feel like I've, I've got a plan and I kind of know what I'm doing now. So when I meet um, a child for the first time and let's say two or three, um, the first thing that we do through the sort of early years um, is focus on play and fun. Mm. Everything has to be. Um, just as you would do with another child who doesn't have any difficulties, you know, children love to play and they don't know that they're doing work, they don't know that it's therapy. Um, so what does your child like, you know, and um, what books are they interested in, what are their favourite characters? Um, lots of children I've met um, love the character Mr Tumble, um, which is perfect because he obviously does lots of signing. So, um, yeah, therapy isn't, um, isn't work, it's, it's fun, it's play. Um, look at your child's interests and bring therapy into what they already like doing. Um, otherwise, you just end up having a big battle on your hands, which isn't fun. Yeah, I, I can totally relate to that. You know, when we had Ellie and we wasn't aware of um, the disability down syndrome and I'm the total opposite and I've always been honest, I've never actually met a person with a disability growing up. Don't ask me now how, but it did happen. Um, so when we got all these therapists uh, provided for by the amazing NHS, we did think it was a chore. It was something we had to do. It was something we needed to do to help her grow. And it's great now to hear, like yourself, just do it through play. Uh, you're just so focused on learning, learning, learning that you don't see that. So this is going to be a great help to so many parents. So what tips and tricks can you share with us today? Maybe, I don't know if you've got any differentiation between the young ones and maybe some older ones that are still struggling, but I'll leave that with you. Yeah, sure. So um, one of the things that you can start off um, that combines play with therapy um, for, for the younger ones um, is something that's going to help um, develop those those muscles. So um, as we've mentioned, you know, we, we're likely to be presented with quite low tone, which makes um, eating tricky, it makes drinking tricky, it makes speaking tricky. Um, so all you need is a pot of bubbles um and you're gonna you know children like to play with bubbles um but what you're going to do is you're going to bring bubbles onto the lips so you can blow bubbles i should put a pop with me today um blow blow your bubbles 
Um, but instead of popping, catch, catch a bubble on the wand and bring it up and pop it on the lips. And all that's doing is it's increasing their awareness. Um, you can add the vocabulary on your lips, you can pop it on, on the nose, on the ears, you can be really silly with the bubbles. Um, they're learning the language and also they're increasing their awareness of their lips, which obviously are really important um, to be using um, at a later stage maybe. Um, another thing to introduce quite early, and again it's not something that needs to be introduced in a strict way, um, but would be something called a tri chew So it's a triangle shape, um, so a shape like that, and it's like a rubbery texture. Um, and some children are quite resistant at first, you know, might be a bit tactile defensive and not like lots of touch, um, but persevere and, and again, just, just have it available to play with, explore. Um, but that goes, that's going to develop their chewing skills, um, which gets the jaw working and getting stronger, um, which is important, obviously chewing for, for eating, but also our jaw, we need to be able to control it and move it um, when we start speaking. Um, so a pot of bubbles and, and a try chew um, would be perfect for a young, younger child. Um, older children, um, often there's no need to differentiate when it comes to bubbles. Um, you know, I, I will bring out bubbles with um, much older children and they, they still really enjoy it. I, you know, um, even, even we do, don't yeah. we? <laughs> I, I love yeah, they're just fun. Um, but when it comes to, you know, I mentioned the tri chew, um, there are different designs, there are different textures. Um, you know, some, so if you've got a girly girl, they might um, like the, there's something called chewelry, um, which again, you can get, you can get chewing on, um, but you know, you can wear it as a necklace, for example. And um, so there are different ways in which um, you can be working on something um, without realizing it almost, um, and it can, it can appeal to different, you know, different different ages, um, and people with different interests. Um, so yeah, so generally the younger children, um, your main goal is working on skills. You just want to get those skills up. So often, um, that's where they, you know, they have their one to one, um, and they're doing lots of therapy. And it might be at a workstation. It might be separate from everything else that's going on. And they just and it's repetition. Um, it, over learning, you know, um, you're going to be doing lots of again, 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 again. You know, think Tally Tubbies um, for those of you that, that may remember. Um, and um, signing um, children with dads will often, not all, but often um, love to copy. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so signing is perfect. It's a visual way of communicating. Um, and it helps to get rid of some of that early frustration that comes with um, not being able to talk. So um, yeah, get playing, get signing. Um, signing can be lots of fun. Um, there are some amazing people out there who are posting videos of themselves signing. Um, this one called Makaton with Lucinda, I think. Um, yeah. her. She's fantastic. Um, you know, the, there's lots out there um, that make this um, more fun than perhaps it was years ago. Um, so yeah, and that's okay. It's okay to watch a bit um, of TV if it's Mr. Tumble and you're learning signing at the same time. Absolutely. I mean, one thing that I was worried about, and maybe some other you know parents, carers are, is that should you introduce signing at such an early age, will they ever, will your child ever speak? Uh, you know, from experience, Ellie did drop the sign in when she started to speak. She still loves learning it now. She's now learning, um, you know, pop tunes with singing hands. So she, it, she still does it, but she will speak. So it's nothing to worry about, is it? Absolutely not. No, um, all forms of uh, different forms of communication, whether it's signing, whether you've come across um, symbols like with pecs or with um a device that speaks for you when you press the symbols and anything like that there's been so much research done um, and, and it really doesn't um, prevent a child from talking but, but on the positive it gives them lots and lots of feedback that they need so they're hearing that language all the time if they're signing someone's going to be signing and interpreting that sign if they're pressing a button on a, a computer device or an app and they're hearing that word being spoken 
Um, so it's actually um, been proven many times to actually speed up that speech production. Um, so yeah, it's it's a really common concern, and I completely get it. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, it's worth it. No, it's, it's well worth it. Worth it. it. Yeah, it's it's not something that's going to stop your child from talking. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, thanks very much for that, Karen. Um, if somebody wanted to reach out to you today, you know, where could they find you? Okay. Um, what, do you offer, what would you offer them today, obviously, during the situation? Yeah, um, yeah, difficult times, isn't it? So I am on Facebook and I am on Twitter um, quite a lot. So um, I've got a Facebook page, which is Karen Massey Therapies. And um, I have another Facebook page, which is um, about uh, for my book, um, which is this one, um, Helping Children to Speak uh, Down Syndrome Through the Primary School Years. So there is a page on Facebook for that, if you are interested um, in, in chatting to me through there, so you can send a message. Um, I am dabbling in uh, teletherapy via Zoom. Um, works for some children and um, not all and um, so I am offering that service at the moment um, but I will also um, always offer um, a free um, chat over the phone um, for sort of up to 20 minutes I will offer that for anybody that just wants um, a chat about their child and uh, maybe some general ideas general tips um, or just want to talk through their concerns um, so yeah and, and you could, or you can drop me an email and you can make sure that you've got my uh, email address to show in. That's fantastic. Well, when we share this, we'll put both your Facebook page, your Twitter page um, and your email so people can get in touch yeah. with you. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you found that useful yeah. and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Thanks, Bye.